Hello Kreuzer of Vulture, welcome back to the channel. Old Boy here, and today I'm going to present some of the work of Professor Robert Stiglitz, who has extensively studied and written about the origins of purple dye, and how he believes that the archaeology shows that the practice first originated with the Minoans. Let's get into it. Ok, so who is Professor Robert Stiglitz? Well, he is a professor emeritus at Rutgers University, as well as an archaeologist of Biblical and Mediterranean studies, with a research focus on cultural diffusion via Greek and Phoenician seafaring. He received his BA in Classics from the City College of New York, and his MA and PhD in Mediterranean studies from Brandeis University. Stiglitz has taught at many universities in Greece and Israel, and has excavated for many years on numerous harbour sites in those regions. As well as being the recipient of numerous awards, Stiglitz is the former curator of the National Maritime Museum at Haifa, as well as being the author of over 125 articles on assorted Mediterranean studies. As well as this, Stiglitz has taught undergraduate courses on Greek and Roman history, Biblical archaeology, the law in the ancient Near East, and also undergraduate seminars on Bronze Age seafaring. In his journal titled The Minoan Origins of Tyrian Purple, Stiglitz writes about the theories that were present at the time of the publication, which proposed that Tyrian purple production originated with the Canaanites during the Late Bronze Age between 1550 and 1200 BC. He expands on this, commenting that the earliest archaeological evidence for Canaanite production of the dye was indicated by piles of shells and fragments which were located by the harbour of Ugarit and were dated to the 14th and 15th centuries BC. However, in addition to this, he also writes about the archaeological and epigraphic indications from the Aegean, which suggests that the production of royal purple was first developed by the Minoans on Crete before 1750 BC. Some of the evidence he uses to illustrate this point is the fact that purple shells were discovered at Troy, as well as other Minoan sites on Crete which were indicative of the dye's production in these locations. This information led British-born archaeologist R.C. Basanke to propose in 1904 that the Minoan production of purple dye, which was dated to the Middle Minoan period, preceded the Canaanite Phoenician industry. The fact that this proposition by Basanke was only accepted by a few scholars led Stiglitz to conduct his own investigation into the origins of the purple. Quote, According to current theories, the production of Tyrian purple was originated and monopolised by the coastal Canaanites, those people called Phoenicians by the Greeks. This development presumably occurred sometime in the late Bronze Age. Indeed, the earliest archaeological evidence for Canaanite purple dye production, the heaps of discarded shells and fragments, are those unearthed at Minet el Beda dated to between the 15th and 14th centuries BCE. There are, however, archaeological and epigraphic indications from the Aegean, which suggests that the royal purple industry was first developed there, by the Minoans on Crete, before 1750 BCE. The first archaeological evidence of purple shells constituting the debris of purple dye production was already reported by Heinrich Schliemann at Troy. In 1903, the British-born archaeologist R.C. Bosanke found numerous murex fragments at a middle Minoan site on the small island of Kufonisi, off the southeast coast of Crete. In 1904, Bosanke also found purple shell remains at the large Minoan site of Palai Castro in eastern Crete. He therefore proposed that the Minoan purple dye industry, which was dated to the Middle Minoan era, preceded the Phoenician industry, but few accepted his opinion. In 1981, I set out to investigate the origins of sea purple by analysis of pertinent archaeological and epigraphic data, starting with a coastal survey of Crete." End quote.
Stiglitz investigated the Minoan site at Palai Castro and discovered large deposits of murex shells, both on the ground and inside a large stone structure which was located on the bay's headland. On the island of Kufonisi, Stiglitz writes that he found more murex remains, as well as pottery fragments, obsidian chips, and the foundations of another large stone structure. There was also evidence below the site of a later Hellenistic era industrial facility, which Stiglitz writes, he believes, was actually a purple dye factory. The evidence to support this included stone and clay vats, as well as basins and channels which facilitated the handling of liquids. This notion is also corroborated by Cretan inscriptions dated to the 2nd century BC, which state that the site was part of a centre that was dedicated to the production of Tyrian purple. In addition to this, Stiglitz writes that murex remains have also been found at several other Bronze Age Aegean sites, which include the Middle Minoan layer of three major locations. Castri on the island of Kythera, a factory located on the shores of Knossos, and finally the palace of Malia. Later on in the timeline, during the late Helladic era, Stiglitz writes that murex remains can be found at sites both inside and outside of Greece. These locations include Troy IV, which is dated to around 1425 BC, Hala Sultan Teke on Cyprus, which is dated to the late Cypriot III period, and finally, Akrotiri on Thera, which has now yielded significant finds which are indicative of a local purple dye production, which is dated to around about 1550 BC. Quote, At Palai Castro, I found a large surface deposit of murex remains on the southern slopes of the Castri. Most of these were fragmentary, but some were small, whole shellfish. These are presumably from the same deposit noted by Bosanke in 1904. In addition, numerous murex are located within the remains of a well-built stone structure located on a headland in the bay southeast of the Castri. On the island of Kufonisi, I successfully located the Minoan site visited by Bosanke in 1903. It is situated on the slope of a hill overlooking the north shore of the island. Besides the murex remains, pottery fragments, and foundations of a well-built stone structure, it should be noted that there are quite a few obsidian chips on the surface of the site. The water source for modern fishermen is now located on the shore directly below the Minoan site. It was presumably also utilised in antiquity, for near it are remains of substantial industrial facilities. I believe that these are the remains of an actual purple dye factory probably dated to the Hellenistic era. At that time, the island of Kufonisi was a centre of Tyrian purple manufacture, as is known from Cretan inscriptions of the 2nd century BC. Some excavations of the Greco-Roman town of Leuke, located on the shore west of this area, have been undertaken, but as far as I know, the industrial site itself has not been excavated, and its date, therefore, is speculative. End quote. On top of the archaeological evidence presented by Stiglitz, he also writes about the fact that the Mycenaean Greek term porpureia, or purple, was found written in Linear B on several tablets which were recovered from Knossos. One of the tablets even features the expression wanakatero porpure, or royal purple, which Stiglitz writes is the first attestation of a term which would later become synonymous with Tyrian purple. Stiglitz discusses the fact that the classical Greek root utilised in both the murex shellfish and the purple dye, porphur, is not of Indo-European origin. He goes on to say that proposals to derive the term from a Canaanite root have been unconvincing, and that the actual Phoenician terms used for both the shellfish and the dye are both still unattested. Stiglitz then proposes that the word is likely to have been Minoan in origin, and that it was then borrowed by the Mycenaeans, who came into contact with them. Quote, to this archaeological evidence from the Aegean, we should also add a significant epigraphic find. The Mycenaean Greek term, porpurea, purple, is found in several administrative Linear B tablets from Knossos, 
which deal with textile allocations. One of these tablets actually contains the expression Wanacatero Popure, or Royal Purple. This is the first written attestation of a term which in later ages became synonymous with Tyrian Purple. It is significant that this term is first attested in a Mycenaean Greek text from Knossos. The classical Greek root porphur is used to designate both the mollusk and its dye, but it is not an Indo-European word. Astur proposed, unconvincingly to my mind, to derive this term from a Canaanite root parpar, meaning to churn, to boil. However, the Canaanite word for the purple mollusks was evidently hilazon, a word of unknown origin attested only in Talmudic Hebrew. The actual Phoenician terms for the shellfish and its dye are still not attested. As for the Mycenaean term porphur, I would suggest that it was originally a Minoan word borrowed by the Mycenaeans when they learned from the Minoans to produce the dye. End quote. On top of this, Stiglitz writes that Minoan artwork may have preserved depictions of clothing which has been dyed with royal purple. He cites the Hagia Triada sarcophagus, which is dated to around about 1450 BC, as one such example, as well as the image of a priestess from the Acro Tiri fresco, dated to around about 1550 BC, and also the figurine of the Minoan snake goddess, recovered from Knossos and dated to around about 1600 BC. In his conclusion, Stiglitz writes that the archaeological evidence which has been uncovered around the Aegean suggests that the purple dye industry was Minoan in origin. The practice was then adopted by the Mycenaeans as they rose to power, as well as other groups such as the Trojans, Cypriots, the Canaanites and their Phoenician descendants. Quote, the archaeological evidence now available from the Aegean suggests that this industry was not of Mycenaean nor of Canaanite origins. It indicates that the Minoans on Crete and some Minoanized islanders, such as those on Cuthera, were already manufacturing sea purple in the Middle Minoan period, circa 1750 BCE. It also seems certain that this dye was being produced by the people of Thera at the end of the Middle Minoan era. The Mycenaeans, Trojans, Cypriotes and Canaanites then continued to develop this industry in the late Helladic period. The Bronze Age Canaanites and their Iron Age Phoenician descendants were not the actual originators of this dye. It was most likely a Minoan contribution, developed before 1750 BCE, which was then adopted by others, including the Canaanite Phoenicians. End quote. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed that. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who supports me and this channel. I really appreciate the support. And as ever, I'll catch you on the next one. Oh boy, out.